Hello everyone and welcome to the session and in this session we will discuss about the multi-thread synchronization. So in the previous uh, sessions we discussed about what is threading concept and what is thread multi-threading programming concepts and how exactly we are used the multi-thread concept to do a Java program. Now we will just enhance this discussion and we will focus upon multi-thread synchronization. Now, what is the synchronization is going to be all about? Fine. So, we'll just find out what all this is going to be. So, now, before that, before that, uh, when when I say a threads, I'm going to have a program. In a single program, I'm going to have more threads, more than one threads by default or basically. And all these threads is going to share the same address space of program. This is what I have told you in the previous session when talking about threads. But now, to say more about this, it doesn't shares only the, it doesn't shares only the address space. As I told, it shares the memory, the address space. Along with that, it shares the code also. All the threads will share the data. All the threads will share the file or any property or any resource of the program. If you name all those will be shared by the threads fine and there are a few exemptions so let me not go such deep discussion about this but at the outside we will put the statement all the threads of the same program will share all the resources of a program fine so now if that's the case if this is the case now just imagine a thread is making use of a file it is trying to update a file it's trying to read the content of a file or trying to modify a file. And so right now we will say the file has been acquired by the thread one to do some operation, to do some job. So now at this point, if the one more thread two makes a request to access this file, now what it should do now, what it should happen because this file is shared any thread can make use of this and so now at this point nobody will stop nobody will stop the thread 2 by accessing this file because even this file is is shared by thread 2 and so even this is the owner of this file nobody can stop right now just imagine now thread 1 is modifying something in the file it's trying to modify the content it's under construction and thread 2 is accessing the file to read the content now just imagine so whatever the thread one content it was supposed to put it is not complete and thread two is so hurry it has just came and is trying to grab the content now what has happened now the thread one is the I have not completed its job and the content is not updated and thread two has accessed the file which is the content and hold content and not the updated one and so now even this has lost the data content and even later on if the thread one finish of its job it's of no use and this is where we need to think about some mechanism here that is when thread one is updating the content and if you if you decide that thread two should have the updated content now you need to put some mechanism here. You need to put some technique here and make sure that thread 2 will wait. It should wait until the thread 1 is going to complete its job. Once it is completed its job, now thread 2 should be active, acquire the content. Now the thread 1 job is successful. Thread 2 job or whatever the content has acquired, it is the updated one. Now this is how the thread one, thread two, and how the understanding between these two should happen. And if I am able to bring in this understanding, we call this as synchronization. Both the threads should work in synchronization. This is what we talk about multi-threading synchronization. Hence, there are few techniques which you can bring in the synchronization mechanism into program. Hence, when we talk about synchronization, it is the key concept of monitor or semaphore. 
so now once we are going to say we are bringing in a synchronization into the multi thread environment we can call this as a monitor that is i am saying it when a thread is accessing a file we say the thread is in monitor it is in close monitor hence until unless this thread is in the monitor you cannot make any other thread to enter the monitor once it leaves the monitor so now the other thread can enter its monitor hence now we are going to monitor again this can also be called as semaphore if i right now don't crack your head what is semaphore and all this is going to be right now just understand semaphore is same as monitor monitor is same as semaphore and once a thread is as entered its monitor no other threads can enter its monitor hence this thread is using a file let it use the file once it has completed its task of using a file it will automatically leave its monitor now any of this threads which is waiting to enter its monitor now it can enter freely that is where we say monitor is an object its object used as mutually exclusive lock that is in short we call this as mutex that is mutually exclusive in the sense once a thread enters a monitor it is locked and it is exclusive lock for the thread which has entered the monitor now any other thread which is wishing to enter its monitor it cannot enter because it's mutual understanding now it is mutual until unless it doesn't releases the lock by exiting from the monitor the other thread cannot enter this is what the mutual understanding is and the mutual exclusive what we call this as hence the monitor is an object used as mutually exclusive lock and only one thread can own a monitor at a given time that is what i just told when a thread acquires a lock it is said to have entered the monitor and all the threads attempting to enter the locked monitor will be suspended or should wait hence until it should be suspended until the acquired thread exits the monitor and the any other threads which is suspended we will say that all those threads are waiting to acquire the monitor and so once a thread is going to exit from the monitor now any of the waiting thread can acquire the monitor but any one among this clear understand not all the waiting threads can again into the monitor and once a thread has entered a monitor and exited it doesn't mean that it it cannot enter the monitor again it can again request for the monitor and it can again raise the request that it wants to enter the monitor once again and a thread can re enter the monitor whenever it requires this is what we talk about synchronization if i want to bring in synchronization i need to talk about the monitor so hence now if we talk about c program or a c++ program so talking about or bringing the concept of synchronization would be an hard task for me it could be hard task for me because synchronization totally becomes a separate scenario where i should talk about uh, bringing in a header file include a header file make use of the inbuilt function and so on so there are some overhead involved if i talk about any other programming language respectively or specifically c or c++ but java will give you a total opportunity you to use the synchronization concept easily as that is where we say the java implements synchronization through language elements only you need not include anything you need not call any inbuilt function so the synchronization through language elements only similar to keywords similar to statements what we are going to have hence due to this the associated complexity what i just discussed with other language program is easily eliminated by java program and one more important point all objects whatever you create in your java program have their own implicit monitor a object will enter its monitor and will exit its own monitor every object what you create will have its own implicit monitor clear and 
so this is how we are going to make use of monitor as a object in my programming environment and when i want to bring in synchronization as i told you java has got synchronization as its own language element hence we have a keyword called as synchronization a keyword called as synchronization now this keyword synchronization can be used in two ways i can make the entire method whatever the method i'm going to define or declare this entire method now i can make it to be synchronized method or if i don't want to make a entire method i can talk about synchronized statement i'm going to put set of statement create a block of the statement and make this set of statement to be synchronized fine and so this statements can again be one more method call i'll just give an abstract how exactly this synchronized statement should be used later on when i'm talking about an example of this but right now we'll focus upon how we are going to use a synchronized method now just look at abstract level before we go in detail and example program when i say synchronized method this is how we are going to use i'm going to have return type the method name the parameter list the same what i was doing until now even this method can have a body fine and so this method has been prefixed with a synchronized keyword by doing this this entire method will become a synchronized method if there is no keyword it will be non synchronized method fine and if i talk about a statement i am going to use the synchronized keyword and pass the object the object which the synchronization should be carried on and i am going to make group of statements in between this curly bracket so now all the statements will be synchronized now so this is how we are going to use now first we'll see the methods then we'll get into the statement fine so now when i'm going to talk about a synchronized method so now whenever we are going to have a method now this method is going to be the starting point and this method is going to be the exit point for the monitor as i told you a object or a thread will enter a monitor and will exit from a monitor and how this is done it is just simple make a method to be synchronized method and call the synchronized method as soon as you call a synchronized method your thread will be in the monitor and as you as you return from the synchronized method you will be exiting from the monitor that is what enter an object monitor just call the method and that method should be synchronized method using synchronized keyword and to exit from the object monitor it is just returning from the method and in between this in between whatever the entry and exit is going to have remember all other threads that try to call the same or other synchronized method on same instance have to wait now carefully understand here i am going to have n number of threads now all the threads need not wait need not wait now all the threads have been grouped to a similar group where this group tells all this threads is trying to call the same synchronized method first point and all this methods is going to work on the same instance same object and you tell one object on this object the synchronization will be developed on this object you should be able to focus on this and this i am going to have a object and this is the object where we are trying to enter the monitor into and this is the the object what i am talking this is going to be the shared resource right now the same shared resource i am trying to access if you are trying to access the same resource only then we should talk about synchronization that is what the fact is if it is not shared if i am having a thread one which is accessing object one i have got thread two which is accessing object two it is file one file two when this two threads are accessing two different objects or two different files what is the thought of synchronization i never need to bother about this fine hence the object should be same and on that object we should be able to call the same synchronized method hence whichever the thread year after 
will try to call the same synchronized method on the same instance I have to wait year after until the object is going to exit the monitor clear so this is how we are going to talk about synchronized method and how exactly we are going to focus upon just look at an example here fine so right now just look at this example I am going to define a class called as call me which has got a method called as call and I am just going to pass in a string as a message and I am trying to print this out and carefully observe here how we are printing it is not just print statement and is not just printing a message how its message is going to print just look at this I am printing an opening square bracket and then I am appending a message whatever the message I want and the function call will go to sleep mode it will go into sleep hence the thread if it is executing this particular method the thread when it enters the statement and tries to execute the statement the thread will go into sleep mode when it go to sleep mode what happens the other threads will occupy the cpu start its execution which is waiting hence so it is going to be in waiting state and later it is going to resume and after the sleep after the sleep so right now i am not focusing upon this exception handling after this sleep, I am going to print the closing bracket. Hence, what exactly I want here is an opening bracket, print the message and close the bracket. Something like this. If one is the message, open the bracket, print the message, close the bracket. But what is happening in this program intentionally? I am making the thread to go to sleep before printing or before displaying this closing bracket. And this is what the function does and now I am going to have a caller function which implements runnable and once I make a class to be implement runnable now this can be a thread now this class cannot be a thread because this is not implementing runnable or even not extending the thread class and so now this is the class which now right now can be can be a thread or whatever the object I define for this will act as a thread and so now I am going to store a message whatever I want to whatever I want to put it to the caller method I am going to have message and I am going to have the object for this class as target I am defining an object called as target for this class clear and so if I want to call this method I should call the target dot call and I am going to create a thread called as t clear and now I am going to have a constructor where I am going to have the message and I am going to have string so now whatever we are going to pass here so this is going to be the current thread and whatever the string I am going to pass this is going to be the thread name clear and now I am going to have target equals t argument that is whatever the target I pass as a parameter that is going to be the current thread and so I'm going to have message equals s and so whatever the name of the thread is going to be I'm going to pass through constructor so that will be saved as the message and now I'm going to create the new thread using this operator and now this will be stored in this reference now I'm going to say t dot start and so I'm going to make I've created the new thread I've made the thread to be runnable and this will automatically call the run method and this run method will use the target object of the call me class and calls this method by passing the message right and this is what this class is going to do and uh, in class which contains a main function inside its main function I am creating an object for this class and so I'm going to have one object now and I'm going to create three objects for this class that's caller ends I am going to have thread 1 thread 2 and thread 3 I am creating three objects for this that means I am creating three threads and the first thread I am passing the target as object passing the target as object and passing the target as object and so tr will be the same 
for all the three threads. Hence, when I say target, it's going to be same object. I'm calling the same call method for the same object. Hence, all these three threads is sharing the same object. Clear? Hence, so now I'm passing one as the string and two as the string and three as the string. And I'm going to say try. I'm just uh, making sure that this main thread will be alive until all the threads finish off its job. That's what this statement is doing, which I have just shown you in the previous session. So now, uh, in this case, when I exhibit this statement, the control will come at this statement. It's going to create a thread. It's going to create a thread and it embeds a message and it's going to call the run. When it calls the run, target.call, I am just going to call this method and I'm going to print this angular bracket and I'm going to print the message as one because the first thread message is one and it will go into sleep. When it goes to sleep, what happens? The second thread will be occupied the CPU and the execution will go on. So open the thread and I'm going to print the message as two and it will go into sleep. And next, the third thread will come into picture for execution it is going to print the opening bracket the message 3 and at this point the first thread which had been in the sleep will be wakened up and it's going to print the next statement which is going to be the closing bracket now this is the pair of the first bracket and print line will go to new line and the second thread will wake up it prints its closing bracket and the third thread will wake up, it's going to print its closing bracket. This is the output what I'm going to get. But this was not the output what I wanted. This was the output what I wanted. Hence, now this is what happens if there is no synchronization. Hence, this example what you are seeing is a non-synchronized method. And so now if I want such output with using a sleep function, then you need to make sure that you're going to make the synchronized. Once a thread starts execution and once it enters the monitor, even it goes to the sleep, the other thread should not enter the monitor. And so the, by this, we will make sure once a thread will start its execution, will complete the execution and only then it is going to exit from the monitor. So to do that, you need to modify this program and you need to make this as a synchronized method example. And so now to before that, before I'm do that, just look at this. So this is where we call this as race condition. Every thread is in race to occupy the CPU immediately one thread goes to sleep. Hence we call this as race condition and race condition is considered only when the threads are working with the same synchronized method or the same method, the same object called as target and at the same time in parallel. So only when all these three conditions exist, we call this as race condition, where every third is in quick and in hurry to execute its part. That is where we call this as race condition. So to solve this problem, we are going to modify this program so that it is going to work like a synchronized. And so if you just observe what modification we have done here, the void call was just a non-synchronized method. Now we have made this to be a synchronized method using the synchronized keyword. By just adding this one keyword statement, my problem is solved and this is the output what I'm going to get. And how exactly this happens? Because if we have used synchronized, and so once we are going to create the thread and once the first threads execution calls the message, now this call message is a synchronized method. Hence the thread has entered the monitor. The first thread has entered the monitor. It has entered the monitor because it has called the synchronized method. This is what I told you. The we are going to enter the monitor when the synchronized method is called and this is what exactly has happened here. So now it is going to print the opening bracket, 
it prints the message it will go to sleep it has been in waiting state but still it is in the monitor understand this now even if the thread one tries to tries to access the same object for execution now this cannot happen but in any other thread some other different thread which is working on a different totally different independent object that can come and occupy the cpu and start its execution but not the thread which wants to access the same object called as target and the same method called as synchronized method and so now the second thread will never enter the execution even the third thread will never enter the execution hence now it is going to print this it will wake up it will come back occupy the cpu and it's going to print the closing bracket and after it's going to finish off this this is the end of synchronized function call it will return from the synchronized method once it returns from the synchronized method it will automatically exit from its monitor so now any of the other two threads can enter its monitor now fine it enters the monitor prints this message the third thread enters the monitor and prints its message and by just bringing in the synchronized key and the method we have serialized the access so this is how and this is how we think about synchronization with respect to multi threading fine now this is how we use a synchronized method now just focus upon how we can make use of synchronized statement fine so you do not have access to the source code that means uh, when you should think about synchronized statement because the synchronized method is solving my problem but when should i think about this now just look at a scenario fine the method what i have just showed you previously that was the method what you had defined you had designed hence you have made that method to be synchronized method now just imagine a scenario where you want to use a method of some other class that is you are trying to import and you are trying to import some java method and those methods are not available for you or can or not accessible to you you cannot open those classes open those programs open those header files go into the code and change the method to be synchronized you cannot do that and so right now you don't have access to some part of the source code but you are in a situation where you want to make that part of the code or a specific method which is not accessible to you and you want to make that to be synchronized and you need to bring that into synchronized environment in that case think about this that is now we we'll just put synchronized keyword and the common object which we try to bring in the parallel execution and between this curly brackets put any statement but specifically i'm giving a scenario of a method which is not accessible to you to be at the different source code then just call that method just make a function call of that method in this synchronized block that will solve your problem either instead of putting a synchronized keyword for the function header you are bringing in the function call as the part of the synchronized so this is what you could think about the synchronized statement and so once this is going to have just look at the example now the same call me method class what i discussed in the previous example and the same color the way we are going to create the thread so now we are using the same function here changing nothing here because i have just imagine i don't have access for this method and so i cannot change anything in this method even i cannot put put a synchronized keyword for this and so i need to use this function as it is but still i want to make this function to be synchronized and so now just look at the modification what i have done here now this is the function call what i am making for this function call i will put this function call statement under the synchronized statement hence so synchronized keyword and the common object is the target hence pass that as the parameter and i am going to open the curly bracket and i am going to have this as target dot call message and i am going to close the curly bracket
Now this function call is, is inside the synchronized block of statement. This means now whatever the control goes inside this, now this function call will make my statement to enter the monitor and only after the execution of this statement, only when I come out of this statement, that is where I exit from my monitor. So now the both the programs will be similar now. Hence, if I try to execute this program now, I am just going to end with the same output now. There is no any difference, the same output now. Because in the previous example, I was entering, I was entering the monitor of a thread when I call the function and when I was exiting when I return from the method. The same thing happens here. When I enter this statement, the function is called, I enter the monitor and once the function is executed and once it returns, the control comes here and I exit the synchronized statement. That is where I exit the monitor. Both are similar now, but the different ways of using synchronized keyword along which we are going to have a method and we are going to have a statement. So now with this, we are going to have a thread and whatever we have talked, so we have talked about synchronization, which we call this as unconditional block threads from asynchronous access, fine? So that, that is, we were trying to block the threads, we were trying to block the threads unconditionally irrespective of understanding what the thread want. Either the both the threads were trying to access the object and do they want to access at the same time and keeping synchronization what was necessary to access. Now I want both the threads to access the object, access the object but still want to be in synchronization. But that was not possible in the pure synchronous concept. I was totally blocking one thread away from the other thread. But now, I am going to make the thread to access the shared object, but still I will make the synchronization to be intact. That is where I talk about inter-thread inter communication. When I want the inter-thread communication, the thread should be accessible the same object at the same time but still the synchronization is to be maintained so just look how this is going to be done so now when i say inter-thread communication multi-threading replaces event loop as we discussed in the previous session and threads replaces pooling fine that is whenever we don't have a multi-threading concept we are going to have the event loop we are going to have the event loop and this event loop is going to in a loop checks whether there's any thread which wants to be in execution and we start pooling. And this is what exactly happens by default if you don't have multi-threading and if you have single threading. But we have overcome that where we are replacing multi-threading with event loop and threads has been replaced with the pooling. Hence, we don't require any more event loop or even the pooling concept for us if I talk about Java and multi-threads. And now, having this concept, having this concept, now just look at this example. So, where we are going to have two threads, one which produces the data and we call it as producer threads. And we are going to have a consumer thread which consumes the data. Hence, we are, the producer thread will keep on producing the data and we will put into a common data structure called as queue and the common memory which is shared by the two threads at the same time. I produce, you take. I give, you take. That is what this should go on. That should go intact. So the consumer cannot consume an object or cannot consume a product until the producer produces it. And as soon as the producer produces an object, the consumer needs to consume this. So you cannot just skip it out. And this is what we call this as classic queuing problem. And so this classic queuing problem is also called as consumer producer problem or it's also called as bounded buffer problem. That is this queue is considered to be buffer and it is bounded to some rules. So now this is shared first of all 
The second thing is the consumer should not consume until the producer produces. And once the producer produces, the consumer should consume. If anything, anywhere mismatches this, the system will go fail. That is what we call this as classic queuing problem. And this is what causes pooling. That is, the consumer should be notified that producer has produced. Producer should be notified that consumer has been consumed. That is what the problem is. Now, we will just see how exactly this problem can be avoided or how exactly we are going to avoid the pooling concept totally. Right? And this, when do I notify consumer? When do I notify producer? So, this is going to be a pooling mechanism again. But right now, Java doesn't case about pooling. It replaces with the multi-threads. Hence, we, need, we are going to avoid the pooling totally. And we are going to avoid the pooling totally by using the inter-process communication mechanism. By using these three methods available in your Java and inbuilt methods, we are going to solve this problem. We are going to make sure the multiple threads is going to access the same shared resource at the same time and in synchronization. That is where we call about the wait, the notify and the notify all. And so can be called only within a synchronized context. All these methods can be called only when this is going to be in synchronized context, either a synchronized statement or a synchronized method. Hence, now we'll see how exactly this is done. Now, when I say consumer producer problem, I'm just giving an animation to make you understand how it looks. Now, we are going to have a producer and a consumer who is going to consume the data. Now, just imagine producer has produced a data and it has moved to the next block. The 10 was produced and now the consumer should come into picture and it should consume the data. Fine, everything is working fine until now. And now, again the consumer, oh, now there is something happened which will, which should have been not happened because producer has not yet produced anything and the consumer is trying to consume. Now, what does it consume? If it is consuming, it consumes some garbage value, garbage data, which is not right because consumer should consume only when the producer produces. And now the producer will produce the data, something like it, it moves on. Now, even this is not right because now 8 will not be consumed by the consumer because it has moved forward. Even it's wrong. And again, if the producer produces the data and moves on fine, now this is fine. Consumer will consume the data fine, but this is wrong because 8 is not yet consumed. And this is where the system fails now. One wrong, one wrong move has made the system to go fail. This should not happen. This should be synchronized. Both producer thread and consumer thread should work in synchronization. That is where we talk about the inter-process communication or inter-thread communication. And now just look at this, the incorrect implementation, what is going to happen. I am going to have a class called as producer and this is going to be a thread, going to be a thread. And I'm going to have a consumer. Again, this is going to be a thread. Fine. So now this producer is going to have a class, a common data structure, a common object, which will be used by both the producer and the consumer. Now this is going to be, this is going to be intent. And I'm going to have a get method, which is synchronized method, which is going to tell. So what element has been got and so this should be consumed by the consumer so this get method will be worked using the consumer which is going to get the value and the producer will put the value and so this method will be used by the producer again this is a synchronized method so which is going to put a value into the structure using num is going to put into the structure and prints a statement it returns the data it puts the data and I'm going to have a producer uh, class, which can be a thread now, a producer thread. 
as a constructor so which is going to create a new thread and uh, as a reference of a thread whatever i'm going to pass or as an object which is going to pass and the object what is accept is going to be of this class type hence i'm going to have a common object between these two when there's a common object only then i can talk about consumer and producer problem or producer consumer problem and this thread is going to take the current thread as a parameter and the thread name is going to be producer and make the thread to be runnable and the run method so which the start will start the run method in this run method will say int i equals 1 and while true i am just going to print the value of i and just an empty statement over here fine similarly i am just going to call the put function so when the producer produces a data and I'm going to similarly say get where I want to get the value from this function where I'm going to get the data from this function. Now this is how we're going to work. So in the main function, I'm going to create the object for this queue as queue and call the producer, call the consumer by passing the same object. Now two threads working on the same object now any one thread can enter the monitor and can leave the monitor. So when I execute this particular program, the output what I'm going to get is, now put one is going to called and I'm going to print the statement as put one. Now this has been called, this thread is in execution and now it has entered the monitor. So now it's in the while loop, it can just keep going it has not it, it cannot exit immediately it can go on it can go on or it can immediately exit and it can go on get and execute the consumer thread and the consumer thread is going to print the message as got one right on the value of n is one and i'm going to print this as one and later on i can say got one again when it enters the monitor it may not leave the monitor immediately and the producer will be keep on waiting so without producer producing a data so the consumer will be keep on consuming the same data and the put will enter and its monitor we keep on executing and sometime it will exit the monitor and the and the consumer thread will get into execution and it's going to print or it's going to consume seven but what happened to the values produced 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's all missed. And this is going to be mess up. This is going to be mess up. So though both the threads are working in synchronization of the shared data, but not working intact. There's no interprocess communication. I have produced, you take. That should be the communication. Fine. I have taken, you produce. That should be the communication between these two processes. And so now we are going to have a corrected implementation of this program by bringing in the inter-process communication or inter third communication by using the three methods what we call so we can make use of notify we can make use of wait we can make use of notify all when i use notify it is going to notify the thread which is waiting in the queue any one thread will be notified and if I say notify all, all the threads which is waiting, so it's going to get the trigger and may start the execution. But now just look at this. So there is no change in this class. It is intact. Even this is intact. Even this is intact. The only change is in the class Q, where I'm going to have a synchronized method for get and put. And now I'm going to take a flag as true. And now just look at this. So while flag that is while true i enter i enter for example let me start from the put i enter the put method and when i enter the put method the flag value is going to be true so not of true is false it will not wait now the thread will not go into the wait state hence we are going to say n equals num we are going to have n equals num that is whatever the value have been passed will be put into this variable n that is whatever in the loop i am just going to if i pass one it's going to be one if i pass two it's going to be two and so i'm putting the value one right now as the first iteration and the flag value becomes false now the producer has been produced one the flag value is false 
and I am printing the statement as put1 and this is the output what I am going to get and worse when I say put1 I am going to say notify so when I say notify so none of the thread is right now waiting but it is waiting to occupy the thread as we'll say notify when I say notify the other thread will come into picture the consumer will come into picture right now because producer was in execution and the consumer will be in wait when I say notify the consumer which was waiting will come into execution and once this is going to be in execution it is going to call the get method and right now just imagine what the flag values flag values false right now flag value has been set to false and once the flag value is false now while of flag is false now this will not go into wait it's going to print as got one it's going to print got one and flag will be true now and we'll say notify now this is going to notify this statement and when it's going to say notify this statement and this is how the flag will go to wait and will notify the flag will go to wait and will notify so hence it is going to work intact now so the one thread will go into wait it will make the other thread to notify and that thread will notify the waiting thread and it will go into waiting state and so this is going to be a proper synchronization where I'm going to get the output as put get and exactly the consumer producer problem has been solved this is the correct way of implementing the custom and now when I'm going talking about uh, this thread so when I talked about how we are going to put a thread into the wait state and how we are going to make the thread to resume its execution by notifying and now whenever we talk about controlling your threads I can suspend the thread whenever I want its execution I can resume the execution I can stop the execution I am going to use this three methods the suspend method and I am going to have resume method and I am going to have the stop method I can suspend the thread whenever I want by just calling this method I can make any thread to resume the execution after suspend whenever I want I can kill the thread or I can stop the thread whenever I want but just think if I suspend I can resume the thread whenever I want but if you stop the thread is dead you cannot resume it back hence you can control the thread either to suspend resume or stop whenever you want depending upon how we're going to do but whenever we're going to talk about this suspend resume and stop this is not the right way of doing if you are using a new version of java or java 2 thereafter the version 2 and thereafter java is not the right way of doing still you can use but those are deprecated methods when i say deprecated methods it says there is a better way of doing the same job instead of using this methods they exist but in making use of those methods it's not good enough for the program that is what the deprecated is going to be all about so this methods if you use there can be some sort of problem caused in the threading concept or in the execution environment so for that purpose java will just give you a warning this methods are deprecated please don't use but still nobody is stopping to use this still you can make use of this but there is a better way of doing this i can make a threat to suspend by just calling the wait method what i talked in interpose communication and if i want to resume i am going to call the notify so these two methods are doing my job easily where the suspend and resume method can be called anywhere in the program and which is dangerous and even the stop method can be called anywhere in the program again this is dangerous because if a method should be controlled it should be controlled by the run method only inside the run method of that thread hence the wait and notify should be called one side the run method only when that's going to be synchronized hence so using this is dangerous as we call this as deprecated and so we are going to say let the run take the complete control of how we are going to suspend resume or stop a thread and so that is how the different way of how exactly we are going to make use of 
Hence, this is the modern way of suspending or resuming or stopping an operation. So now I'm just going to have the my suspend method. I'm just going to have my suspend method or my resume method when I want to suspend and resume. So this I'm just going to have a method where I'm going to have run and I'm going to have my suspend. I'm going to say suspend flag equals true or I'm going to say suspend flag equals false. And whenever I'm going to say suspend flag equals true, my thread will go into wait state. Hence, I am suspended. And whenever I want to resume this, just call the method my resume. And this will make the suspend flag to be false and which will notify the waiting thread and it will resume. This is the modern way of suspending, resuming and stopping. Just have a look at this particular program to clearly understand what I am saying. And this is what all you need to understand about the threading concept and multi-threading concept and how we talk about having the synchronization on the multiple threads which is trying to access the same object at the same time or how we can control the threads using suspend, resume or stopping or how we are going to make the modern way of using the same weight and notify to control the threads or multi-threads and how we are going to bring in the intra-thread communication. Fine. So this is what you need to understand by the concept of multi-threading. And this is what all for this session. Thank you.